Welcome, everybody. This is the Microsoft 365 platform community call. It is January 24th. Uh, as I was updating the slides, I noticed that uh, next week is, is the last day of the January. So spring is coming if you are in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, pretty soon, pretty soon at least. Now, uh, today we'll do a, a two slides of the, or recap of the assets which we have available. What's the latest news? What are the latest on the, the blog post and all of that? And then we'll do a group uh, photo uh, we use in the Microsoft Teams uh, to get a mode picture. And then after that, we have the real stars of today. So first of all, it's not really a demo, uh, but there's going to be a discussion related on the roadmap updates for SharePoint framework for Microsoft Viva, Microsoft Teams, and more. So recapping what's coming on the on that side. Um, that's led by Luca and John Nugan and Alex are helping on the and, and, and questions in the chat. And I, I might jump in there as well. And then I'm going to do a few slides uh, as an intro, and Andrew Gono is going to actually do a creating a Viva Connection SPFX Ace with geolocation capabilities. And that's part of the new Viva Connection or Viva Home Ace Development Learn module, which is available for you to take advantage for free from the Microsoft Learn uh, assets. And I will, will once again recap the location and all of those as we go through the material. Now, uh, we do have quite a lot of different assets available for you to take advantage as you're looking into getting started with Microsoft 365 development. Or even though you've done a lot of development and you've done a lot of stuff, you might actually double check that you are aware of all of those different assets which we provide for you. So we do have our Microsoft 365 community YouTube channel, which is breaking 37,000 subscribers, I think, today. Um, and there's a new videos around Microsoft 365 uh, topics and released every single business day will have at least one new video. Last week, there was 18 videos related on uh, different aspects and different topics across Microsoft 365 and Power Platform. So it's not just about Microsoft 365, it's the Microsoft Cloud assets and things which you might be interested. So do check that one out and subscribe to that channel. We do have a lot of open source assets available across multiple different locations, but as it might be bit difficult to find the relevant sample for you, we actually have these specific sample galleries which are really designed for you to make it easy to find the relevant sample for you. So rather than starting from scratch and try to figure out how would I do a specific web part implementation or a specific Microsoft Teams bot implementation, use the galleries. They will help you to get an example reference and implementation, and then you can adjust based on your business uh, requirements. Now, we do have, uh, you might be wondering that there's too many URLs to remember. Luckily, we have one location just to remember, which is the AKMSM365 community, and that's the one community uh, site where you can find all of the relevant URLs uh, for you. Now, we, one of the things what we do a lot, of course, is our community call. Uh, so this one is the Tuesday 8 a.m. Pacific time community call. Happens every single Tuesday 8 a.m. Uh, the presenters in this call are typically Microsoft employees, cloud advocates, engineers, and PMs like today. Uh, we might bring some friends like Andrew Connell to do some of the demos uh, in this calls, but typically it's more Microsoft driven. Then we have other calls like Power Platform, Microsoft Identity Platform, and Office Science calls, which are monthly calls, uh, which where typically we have more community uh, driven uh, samples and community driven uh, uh, demos. And then we have our 7 a.m. Thursday call series, which is happening on every single Thursday, 7 a.m. Pacific time. It's either the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community call or the Viva Connection and SharePoint framework call. Now, as mentioned, by the way, all of these calls are getting recorded, so you don't have to be in all of them. You might be all of them. That's more than welcome. But of course, we have our family and other business things to attend. All of the calls are being recorded and being published in our YouTube channel, typically within 24 hours after the call. So making it super easy for you to consume the material in the best possible way for you. Now, uh, the address to download any of the recurrent invites is AKMS community and forward slash calls. Now, we do also offer different opportunities to get started and get involved uh, to participate in the community. Uh, you can schedule or request a demo spot. We would love to have you actually sign up for a demo across Power Platform, Microsoft 365 topics, Microsoft 365 development, whatever comes to mind. What, what, what have you built which you could actually demonstrate and show your learnings for other people in the community? If you're looking in to get an MVP status, potentially from Microsoft, which is a one way of getting acknowledged on being active in community, these actually count uh, quite nicely in that uh, metric as well. So we do actually acknowledge people quite 
nicely in the MVP appreciation as they do demos in the community call. You can also contribute in GitHub and the most important thing always is to provide feedback. So if there's something what you like, something what you don't like, please let us know. We are building Microsoft 365 for you as a partner or as a customer. So we need to understand what works and what does not work. And that's going to be visible, for example, in the SPFX section today as we go through and ask some feedback from you all. Now, uh, we do have a lot of getting started material available. So we have the Microsoft Tracy Start Developer Program and we have our learning materials available for you to take advantage. So please take advantage of both of them. They're available for you for free. The Developer Program uh, Tenant will renew automatically in 90 days as long as you use it for a development usage. So there's some instrumentation in place which will detect are you actually using that in the developer usage. And if you do, it will automatically renew. Uh, the learning material, uh, you don't need to even sign in. You can access the material freely from Microsoft Learn. So super cool as it's available for you. We also have our developer podcast available, uh, which are the Microsoft 365 developer podcast and the PMP weekly uh, for keeping up to date on what's happening within the community. Now, on the sample side of the house, we are breaking 1,460 samples. It's 1,465, if I remember correctly, right now on the sample gallery. And that's a one centralized location where you can find different samples targeting uh, Microsoft 365, SPFX, Microsoft Teams, Power Platform, Power FX, and so on. So there's a lot of, lot of different aspects available for you to find uh, from that gallery. One thing, uh, though we always have new people. So they might not be super familiar with the GitHub. You might not be super familiar uh, on getting started on consuming those material which is available, but we got you covered as well. So we do have our sharing is caring initiative, and this is a, a hands-on, not recorded safe place for you to join a, a scheduled meeting in a Teams where we as a multiple, uh, multiple Microsoft and community members are helping you to get started. And there are different kind of sessions, for example, general first time contributor session, getting started on using GitHub or contributing your samples uh, in, the, in the GitHub. Those are great sessions which are now already scheduled and you can register to those sessions from the sharing and scaring site. Also the writing for web uh, is something which is already scheduled uh, to be coming quite soon, I think in February. Uh, other sessions are dependent uh, on the demand, but please let us know uh, on what you need and we'll get those sessions scheduled for you as needed. On the news site, uh, within the last week, it was really quiet. So the only news from a Microsoft site within the past seven days uh, across these blocks, which we typically cover here, was around how to implement proactive notifications in Microsoft Teams using Power Automate or Azure Logic App. And it's a nice blog post actually comparing the differences on the approaches which you can take in Power Automate or in Azure Logic Apps and comparing, for example, true boot and scalability of that options as you're doing that notification service. So a quick short blog post, uh, but have actually references on how to implement things as well. So really, really cool blog post to check out. Now, before we actually go to the real stars of the day, we we'll, let's do a quick crew photo. And as I'm doing that, I need to still now flip a bit and getting repaired. I'll get the stuff in uh, to get a mode and I will get my Camtasia recorder up and running. So give me one second. And let's use that background now and let's move that in here. So we have 50 seats in room. Let's wait a while how many people we actually get here. So you can enable your camera and we'll grab a GIF animation then out of that. Yet, not yet. We're not yet recording. Let's wait a while. Hopefully, it will, the, the pixelation will get better a bit. We'll still have few seats in the room, few seats in the room, few seats in the room. Maybe I will put the recording on and we'll start waving hands. So let's do some hand waving, everybody. Say hello, everybody in the community. Thank you once again being here. Awesome to have you in the call. Thank you, thank you for joining. A bit pixelated this time, I, but it is what it is. And here we go, excellent, thanks everybody. Let's grab a GIF animation out of that. Now, that was a long monologue from my side, um, but then we'll actually go to the real stars of today. Uh, so we'll start by having a discussion uh, on the roadmap updates for SharePoint Framework for Microsoft Teams, uh, Microsoft Viva, and more. And that's led by Luca. And then after that, we'll go to a Creative Viva Connection or Viva Home SPFX Ace with geolocation capabilities. But Luca, first of all, 
everybody, thank you very much for having us. Um, Luca, Alex, and John here from the SharePoint ODSP uh, OneDrive and SharePoint uh, development framework. Um, we build this little thing called the SharePoint framework that has been very much successful. Thanks to every one of you guys. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, basically, with SharePoint framework, just to provide a little recap, uh, is the platform and the developer framework that you can use in order to build solution for Microsoft 365 canvases and hosting this solution in a Microsoft 365 SharePoint Online. Um, with this model, you can build a solution for Microsoft Teams as personal apps, tabs, meeting application, meetings application and messaging extensions, which for SharePoint, like web part extensions and full page app pages, for the uh, kind of a still new uh, work workload called Viva, Viva Connection, by building a, a dashboard cards for dashboard using the adaptive card extensions component components type. And as recently announced, uh, you can also now use uh, SharePoint framework to build solution for Outlook and Office.com. And one of the reasons why is because these platform are aligning more and more their hosting uh, uh, model with the Microsoft Teams. So building solution for Microsoft Teams and these other uh, hosts will be basically almost the same. So in terms of Viva Connection and Viva Extensibility, uh, if you haven't seen what Viva Connection is, uh, this is what it looks like today. Uh, the majority of people are experiencing the uh, left version of Viva Connections, which is the one that is available everywhere. There is a mobile experience that is uh, a native experience built on top of Microsoft Teams, and there is a solution that will show up in Teams as well as uh, SharePoint pages in your home site, where you can basically have cards, feeds, and have everything that is uh, important for you to access during your daily work. Um, we are also releasing a new version of uh, Viva Connections, uh, which is the one that you see on the left. This is right now rolling uh, for uh, first release, uh, uh, targeted release customers. And the more we are uh, progressing, the more that the experience will change from the one on the right to the one to the left. Uh, the one to the left is a little bit more railed. It requires less configuration steps in order to have that available, but it basically use the same technology and capabilities that the other one, which means that if you're already invested on your cards, if you already build your cards using SharePoint framework and adaptive card extensions, you will be able basically to use everything and there is nothing that you have to change or you have to update in, your, in the cards and in your projects themselves. A um, couple of other things important to mention here. So when we shipped the Viva Connections, the Viva Connection experience on mobile was using uh, um, a different kind of rendering technology, which was more React Native. Uh, we have changed it. We are changing that a little bit so that now the same React experience is on the web and on the mobile as well. That should provide more consistency, and most importantly, it will provide a better and a faster way for us to align fixes and capabilities and new functionalities across multiple platforms, uh, mobile and uh, desktop and web. Veza, as you noticed before, I'm not able to see any comments. I'm not able to see any hands raising something like that. Please, 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 yep. if there it's, is something yeah, yeah, I have absolutely. to repeat. Thank yep. you so much. Okay. Okay, so here's the team. Uh, there's a big team actually, and but all these people are in charge of many things. We have SharePoint Framework, we have Viva Connection Extensibility Platform. Uh, this is uh, the team on the left that is led by John. Uh, those are all the engineers that are writing the code that are making things real. Uh, the one in the middle is Ed. All the PMs here are also in charge of uh, Viva Connections and other uh, platform capabilities, just like uh, Microsoft Graph um, support in SharePoint, uh, uh, other kind of areas like notifications, uh, the, the feeds in Viva Connections, uh, uh, some caching mechanisms of, uh, based on um, OneDrive Sync, et cetera, et cetera. Those are the PMs over there. And then the, the team on the right is the teams in uh, China that they have been uh, in engaging with us for uh, providing uh, um, announcement and, and future capabilities on the um, uh, app catalog. They are the one that built the new app catalog experience as well as store integration. And then we have Pat which is our principal software architect that is 
ensuring that everyone is not screwing up things. And it, when we screw up, uh, he tells us nicely that we screwed up things. That's the theme. It's a big theme, but we are in charge of a lot of things. And uh, that's why you can see so many names over here. OK, so let's talk about what we have and what we will have. Uh, this slide is easy. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. This is what we have in 116. I hope you guys are already using 116. I've seen feedback coming in GitHub. Thank you very much for that. Please keep them coming. Uh, that's a crucial way for us to understand uh, if our direction is the right one and to be able to react on things that are not working quite right. Uh, the, the next three slides are the one that I want to spend a little bit of more time. And the next three slides are basically focusing on a couple of things. So the next slide, which is this one, is going to is focusing on 116. This is what we think to have in 116. Uh, there's a couple of things. 117. Hey, 117. The English is, is, yeah, 16, 17, is, you know. It's not English, it's coffee. Yes. Uh, that yes. is lack yes, in the system. But thank you very much. Yes, 117. So this is uh, what we are currently planning to ship in 117. A um, couple of things to mention. So one is that for sure we want to bump our dependencies to the latest and greatest. Team JS SDK, we want to put at least it to 1.7. That's why there is a plus over there. If there is something better, we will go with there. Uh, we want to go to Webpack 5 support. This is aspirational, but we really want to do that. We are going to move to the schema version 1.5 of adaptive cards. It will give you the ability to do things like uh, table support in QuickView for the uh, adaptive card extensions in Viva Connections. Um, and the other thing that we want to do here is that we want to bump the Teams manifest to 1.13 when you sync to Teams, so that the manifest, the Teams manifest version, sorry, to 1.13 when you create a solution using SharePoint Framework, deploy that in the Mac, in the SharePoint app catalog and click to sync to Teams. That will give the capability of that solution to also surface in uh, Outlook and Office.com. Uh, that's a capability that we ship it as a beta version in 116, but we didn't do the proper wiring to our sync to team feature that is happening in 117. Uh, then we, and the other thing that is important, we want to uh, GA the web part top action that was shipped as beta in 116. Another important thing that I want to mention here is that we are going to ship a feature to support pop up support pop up for token acquisition in browser. So spending a couple of seconds on that one. Uh, you know that when you basically create a SharePoint solution, so that SharePoint solution surface in a browser, we leverage the functionality of the MSAL v1 in order to acquire a token from AD and give the token to your code so that your code can call your favorite API, Microsoft Graph, or whatever it is. Uh, right now, there is a logic in the code that where uh, we get an error from the library that the browser is not allowing uh, cookies or is basically having some problem in receiving the token because it's not able to properly open the iframe or the iframe that opens is not able to authenticate properly. You have Safari, you have ITP, that's a um, standard scenario. Our libraries uh, automatically go and does a full page redirect so that the token gets acquired in the full in the in the mainframe. MSAL doesn't open an iframe, and your code works. That's interesting, fine and dandy and cool because it's all automated. If you have one or few API access, but if you are going to access different kind of APIs and you need different scopes. You're basically having a lot of refreshes in your screen because every time you get for a new token and you don't have the cookie for login to microsoftonline.com, we automatically refresh the page and then you see a lot of flickering. Uh, there is a feature that will ship hopefully in 117 where the admin using a PowerShell will be able to set a property in the tenancy that basically will tell our library to rely on pop-up instead. So the scenario is that if you are a lot of browsers that have a lot of unmanaged clients that have Safari and ITP enabled, you can enable this capability so that instead of flickering, the, the, the moment we try to access AD to get a token and we get an error, we instead of ref automatically refreshing, we will open a pop-up 
and then you in that pop-up you will be able to re-authenticate or you will be able to be a very solid pop-up if you have single sign-on enabled. And uh, at that point, that will be the only time you see the pop-up for the session and you will be able to acquire all the tokens from there. So that's a capability that is off by default and the admin will be able to enable uh, starting from 117 using a, a SharePoint Online PowerShell. Okay, let's talk about what are our aspirations and where our thinkings are uh, focusing for beyond 117. So the first thing is that bot driven, bot driven adaptive card extensions or ACES. Uh, this is happening, it will probably happen this it will surely happen. It will surely happen this calendar year. Uh, we are going working very, very hard to be able to ship that as soon as possible. Uh, it really doesn't have any dependencies on SharePoint framework, meaning that we will release uh, no update in the uh, SharePoint framework SDK or libraries in order to be able to uh, create a bot driven ACES. It's all server side, so it really is not bounded to any kind of a, a SharePoint framework releases, but this is happening and we are hope to ship that quite soon. We also now, want now, to... Look up, look up, sorry, yes. can you elaborate yes. a bit? What is bot driven is? So thank you for the question. We... Yes. Yeah, thank you. So uh, it's interesting because also with all of these new hype and vibes on bots and uh, AI, you're just like, oh, you are going to build a feature that you are going to ask a robot to build the card and the card will magically built by itself. No, it's not that. So uh, bot driven ACES is basically using the same approach that teams use for bots in order to build uh, adaptive card tabs. So the idea is that you can uh, reuse your existing bot that you built for um, Microsoft Teams or build a new bot using whatever language you want, uh, C Sharp, Java, you name it. And basically we will use the bot infrastructure to store your code and the uh, adaptive card code will basically talk to the bot and say, hey, I want you to give me data so that I can render uh, a card view. Or, hey, this is an action that happened, give me the data to render the quick view. So the idea is to basically to use the bot infrastructure that Microsoft has in order to execute your code that, that will generate card view and generate quick view. So that's what it is. It has nothing to do with artificial intelligence, intelligences has nothing to do with natural language is more a way for leverage and infrastructure in order to be able to host your code which will be a new bot uh, to power and generate cards views and quick view does it make sense yep. i'll take that as a yes okay cool yes. thank you um so then the other thing that we want to do is for sure move cache api to uh, ga uh, one of the things that we're working on is building a notification platform for Viva Connections so that you will be able to generate a notification that will surface in the Microsoft team notification infrastructure. And upon clicking this notification, you will be able to interact with your card, interact with your quick view, interact with your solution from the notification itself. Uh, Viva Home Experience, the reason why it's there is because as I mentioned before, is yes, already shipped to some tenants that are in targeted release, but it's not around 100% uh, uh, deployed worldwide. So that's one of the other things that is happening while, as we speak. We also want to have a better support for home site in Viva Connections Mobile. So that's an interesting thing. What we want to do here is that we want to be able to have a similar experience that the new Viva Home users have in the desktop in the mobile itself. And what I mean by that is that we will be able to give you the opportunity to reach your home site, your SharePoint home site, and host that SharePoint home site browser experience within Viva Connection Mobile uh, from Viva Connection dashboard itself. Uh, so aligning the experiences between the desktop and the mobile. Uh, we are also working on new connection card templates. Uh, we had uh, a lot of success for, with the new templates, but we also got a lot of feedbacks that they are good but not enough. So we are iterating across these feedbacks in order to build uh, new templates and new capabilities on the Viva Connection uh, and on the ACES platform itself. 
And then one of the other things that we want to do here, that's probably interesting for some of you guys. We want to, so you know that today we have this thing called the core, the card designer ace and the card designer ace is a way for you to be able to quickly create an ace by um, configuring the card view and being able to feed the card itself with adaptive card JSON in order to have a quick view. That's nice, and we have seen a lot of usage of that card design ace, especially in scenarios when you want to build uh, static cards that have a little bit of functionalities uh, or if you want to build demos. But one of the luck that we have in the, in the card designer ace is the ability to call to consume SharePoint data or to consume data that are exposed through APIs, Microsoft Graph or whatever. So one of the things that basically we we are building is the uh, is a functionality inside of the Card Designer Ace, where the uh, author of the dashboard, upon adding a new instance of the Card Designer Ace in the dashboard itself, uh, they they will be able to also execute API calls and being able to uh, consume and introduce outside external data in the card designer ACE itself. And because uh, we want to be able to keep that kind of flow of uh, building a card, configuring the card, consuming data, and expose and uh, make the card available to the users, secure and governed by the same governance capabilities and functionalities that SharePoint Framework produces, what we are doing is that upon configuration save of the card itself, the idea is to basically start a process that will that and that process will create a, a package that will be deployed in the app catalog and the card will only be available to everyone once the admin approve the card itself. So the idea is basically to uh, target citizen developers. Think about the script editor web part in a governed way for Vivo connections, where the author will be able to create this card, make the card powerful in, and be, by consuming external data. And once the card is ready, uh, upon publishing, uh, the system will recognize that, will create a package, deploy the package in the app catalog, and the admin will be able to approve and, and only after that, the card will be available. So that's one of the things that we are also uh, aiming to ship soon. Moving on, because we're not there yet, other things that we are considering and we are building and we are working on are uh, multi-instance and Viva connections. So today with Viva connections, you can only hit one home site, but what if you have multiple home site? Uh, that's one of the things that we are building here. Uh, connection for tablet support. I think this is all already available somewhere or it's going to be available soon somewhere, but the idea is to basically to have a third form factor, not only desktop and mobile, but also tablet for Viva connections uh, in order to be able to have a kind of a different real estate for the cars that they need that the most. Uh, personalization is another thing that we are going to be able to provide soon for Viva connections. Uh, and then the, another thing that we are building is this kind of feature called the development geo. And this is the Azure point framework capability. So the idea behind this feature is that you as a company have a set of developers that you want to uh, dedicate an in a place on your environment so that they can build the content by consuming uh, tenant data. So it's not a different tenant, it's not a developer tenant, they are developing in the tenancy itself, but you want to isolate them so that uh, uh, they are not able to access, I don't know, maybe they are not able to access production API or they are not able to access other things. So the idea here is to leverage the multi-geo capability that the SharePoint have, and by leveraging this capability, you will be able to create a development geo, and that development geo will basically have a different URL because that's how multi-geo works, and that different URL will be bounded to a different application uh, principle in AD. And that geo will have different permissions. We'll have a set of permissions that are only available, uh, that are only uh, available for that geo, so that the developers will be able to code their solutions, but only use APIs that are available there. So that's one of the things that we're doing there. Uh, another functionality that we're building is uh, 
more capabilities and control for the admins to understand the where ungoverned script can potentially be injected in their tenancy. So today we have this feature called no script. Uh, when you disable no script, you are able to re-enable uh, script injection using script editor, web part, and all of the other uh, functionalities that are available on classic uh, templates and sites. That's all nice and dandy. It's all uh, controlled by the admin, but the admin has no idea to understand where no script is disabled or enabled. So we are building some functionalities so that when you go to the uh, tenant administrator, you will be able to have a look and see where no script will disable and basically being able to act on that. Uh, and then the other thing that we are working on is uh, the ability to create the full page apps uh, that are isolated from the rest of the tenancy, but they're not using an iframe. So today, when you're creating an isolated web part or an isolated app, we run that in an iframe, and that iframe points to a different domain. And this is a way for us to be able to constrain the permissions on that web part only. Uh, permission constriction is great but iframes sucks. So one of the things that we want to do is being able to create an app page, a full page app, and then that full page app, the entire app will run from a different, an isolated domain. So will not an iframe, will not be an iframe, but will still be a different domain that will still be connected or be bounded to a different application principle that will still have its own permission scopes but it will not be an iframe and it will be a full page with different domains. Similarly to if you have a SharePoint uh, hosted add-in and you see the URL being different, that will be the kind of a similar experience for this capability and this feature. And then a couple of things that we're doing that are not SharePoint framework key, but are going to be used in SharePoint framework and that we know that are useful to you. Uh, SharePoint pages in Microsoft Graph API is already there and we are going to uh, extend uh, and ship that soon or uh, make that more available soon. And another thing that we are building is the ability to have vanity domains in graphs. So today, if you go to slash me slash sites and you are in a vanity domain tenant, and if you don't know what a vanity domain tenant is, good job, you are not dealing with a lot of complexity that can be a pain in the back sometimes. But if you have to, uh, you know that that information is not available today in Microsoft Graph. So what we are doing is that we are putting that capability in Microsoft Graph so that in the same way that the multi-geo information is there, in the same API, you will also be able to see uh, all the vanity domains that your tenant has. That was a lot of content, but I think I'm done. Good. So uh, I guess you have a one more slide, unless I'm completely mistaken. Yes. Because we have a few minutes. So we do uh, we do realize, uh, and I do apologize on this for those who can hear us, but they cannot see the chat. Uh, we have unfortunately maxed out uh, the chat uh, with our recurrent meeting with 1,000 attendees in the chat. But um, we would love to have questions in the chat and, and feedback for the team for those who can actually write them uh, related 1, on 1000 yeah uh, in the chat yes yes that's a wow. recurrent meeting so it, it's not 1000 attendees in this call but still um, for a moment I'll, you made me feel important yeah. thank you for crushing so, my sense <laughs> you're welcome Luca. Uh, <laughs> but we would love to have a discussion on chats related on uh, who, what you need, what works, what doesn't work. Uh, we will move into the next topic and the demo of today with AC uh, right after this uh, slide, um, but please continue discussion. Uh, something what you would love to have or something is missing, or if something works, positive feedback is absolutely welcome as well. Um, uh, so please let the team know. Uh, because that's super valuable for the next steps planning. Or if something on this previous slide was confusing, please ask about it. Or if there was something like, hey, I want to have exactly that. Um, that's super important for me. Please share that, that in the chat as well. Oh, but also something like, hey, what the hell are you doing? Why are you doing this? We are not going to use this at all. Please spend your cycle elsewhere. Yeah, Valid that's, comments. That's really we would really thing. like to hear that. Yeah, we do not say hell in this show because this is a family show, uh, so we'll beep that away, uh, but uh, it's okay. So, <laughs> sorry, look. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you, Luca and, and John and Alex helping on the on the questions on the chat. Um, and then uh, please continue discussion in the chat. We need to be conscious about the time because we do have another topic which this time relates on SPFX. Just a word away, a recap for next week. Uh, we will have a, the feature crew who created Viva Home uh, joining us on next week. And next week, we also talk about uh, Azure communication services, but that's for next week. This week, we have, were quite Viva centric and SPFX centric uh, by a coincidence, uh, basically. But please continue, continue discussion again on the chat related on those questions and those features, which really work for you. So if there's something you would like to see in SPFX, Please let us know. Um, that's super important for the team. Now, for the next section and for the next uh, 21 minutes, uh, we do a quick recap, uh, first of all, uh, about the ACE uh, Learn module, which is now available for you to take advantage for Viva Connection and Viva Home. Viva Home is the one which is rolling out uh, in a second. I'm going to talk about that one with the one slide a recap. And then we actually go for the creating of Viva Connection SPFX ACEs with geolocation capabilities. And Andrew Connells is going to show that one in practice. I'm no longer allowed to write code, apparently. Now, uh, which is a good thing. So uh, first of all, uh, we do have the new uh, Microsoft Viva Learning module available, which is focusing on development of ACE, uh, ACEs. So these are the ACEs which are available in the Microsoft Viva uh, for Viva Home and Viva Connection for now, and maybe potentially in the future in other areas as well. We can't promise anything in there, but uh, we're, we're seeing a huge usage uh, on, on these sections already. The learning module is available in Microsoft Learn at AKMS uh, forward slash Viva forward slash ACE forward slash Learn. Uh, we'll put that link in the chat in a second as well. Um, and so you can easily access that. That is a one hour and 52 minutes of content on getting started on creating these ACEs uh, for Viva, Microsoft Viva uh, using SharePoint framework or using SPFX sounds better because it's not really about SharePoint, it's about Viva this time. Now, uh, as, as kind of noted uh, on Lucas' intro as well, SharePoint framework is a bit confusing from a naming perspective because uh, it is actually an extensibility framework for creating uh, stuff, not only for SharePoint, for Microsoft Teams, for Microsoft Viva, and nowadays also for Outlook and Microsoft 365 app. It has the content, uh, it has the automatic single sign-on, automatic code hosting directly in the Microsoft 365 tenant, and it uses industry standard tooling. And you can use it in Teams toolkit, you can use in Viva Toolkit, um, you, you choose whatever JavaScript framework you use it with SPFX, and that gives the flexibility. The ACE module really focuses on the Microsoft Viva extensibility. So how can you extend and modify the frontline workers experiences in mobile or the, the information worker experiences in mobile, and then also the desktop experiences. So those small cards, which we can see in the desktop or in the mobile experiences. And in this time, uh, this is the module three in that Learn module, uh, which is available for you. Again, I will put the link in the chat in a second. Um, but the exercise three is really on creating a geolocation capabilities with SPFX uh, for Microsoft Viva Connection and Viva Home. And I will let AC Andrew Connell from Voitanos to get, take it over from here. Cool, thanks, Vesa. This is a continuation of the demos I've done in the last two of these calls over the last two weeks. Uh, this is the third demo from that Microsoft Learning module that Vesa mentioned a few minutes ago. Um, really quick, just my, uh, let me just do a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Andrew Connell. I've been in Microsoft MVP for a very long time and I focus uh, mostly on Microsoft 365 development and Azure development. But I guess my background is primarily like in the SharePoint space. And these days that means SharePoint framework. Um, you can see some information about how to contact me at the bottom, but that's not why you're here. Let's talk a little bit about this module. Um, the module is broken up into is it like Vesa said, it's um, almost two hours long and it's broken up into three main sections. Um, each section is a little bit of a lecture followed by a demo that reinforces what you just learned. Um, so the first two, the last two meetings that we've had that you can grab the recordings for um, of what you're watching right now uh, were from the first two sections. And the last one here is the one I'm going to do today in just a minute is uh, a demo of the last hands-on lab exercise uh, from that third section uh, or from, from the module, which is the third section. And it's specifically around building an adaptive card extension that leverages two of the three unique aspects that we have with ACEs and specifically adaptive cards that's supported by Viva Connections. And that is the three areas are working with uh, geolocation, um, so one of them is showing a geolocation, one of them is selecting a geolocation, and then the third one that is not shown um, here, 
for the interest of time really, is being able to select uh, a media object. So specifically an image, if you want to upload an image. So you take a picture of something from your phone and you want to upload it. That's what that's designed for. So let's forget about like the slides because we're developers and let's look at actually a demo of actually something happening. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna come over here and actually get this guy um, up and running and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do first and then we'll go back and we'll look at the code. I'm not gonna walk you through everything about building an ACE because quite frankly, I don't have enough time to do that um, in the demo. Instead, I'm gonna show you the specific pieces that are applicable just to Viva Connections. So let me go ahead and add this back. Let me go add this to our um, the adaptive card, my ACE uh, to the page. Now, what this is going to do, the scenario for this is like um, think about something like uh, a campus shuttle. So uh, or like a and when I may say campus, I mean like a large corporation um, that has multiple buildings around a large campus. So the Microsoft guys are definitely familiar with this. Um, or uh, you can think about it as like a shuttle for like a large university that has a lot of buildings and stuff. So think about it kind of like an Uber or a Lyft, but uh, a very simplified version of it for a demo. So what I do here is I actually have everything is gonna be stored in a SharePoint list. So what I need to do is first configure this and go grab the list ID. So let's come over here and let me just go to my, my list called Campus Shuttle and I need to get the list ID for this. And I'll do that by just jumping over to the list settings. Um, I'll then grab the ID for my list, which is here in the URL. Copy that out, come back over here, select them, edit, paste it in, close it, save, we're in good shape. Now let's switch over to preview mode. Now, how does this work? So what I can do here is you can see that as a driver, the idea here is that I'm the driver. So I'm looking at this on my phone and in, in the Viva Connections or Viva Home app. And I can either specify that I'm either, uh, if I click book a trip, I can choose that I'm either en route to a pickup to go pick up a passenger and take them somewhere, or I'm actually starting my trip. I've got my passenger. Now, before I do this, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna use the geolocation stuff for this, but I don't want you to see where I live. So let me switch over and use the dev tools to actually specify a um, uh, to give me a fake location. So I'm gonna go to my sensors and the browser tool, and I'm gonna choose my default location to Gainesville, Florida. And so now let's take a look at this. So I'll go book a trip, and here I'm gonna say, select the origin from, on, from the map. Now, when I first click this, that's gonna go ahead and open up. You see, I've got a second quick, uh, quick view that's gonna launch. So when I say select a location, this is what I get. And so this is a location here um, near the University of Florida in uh, Gainesville, Florida in the United States. And this is where I've told it, uh, where I told the browser, like I said, this is with the geolocation for my browser. So don't actually go get a real location. That what I just showed you there really quick in the um, in the Chrome Dev Tools. It's a nice little trick when you're doing demos to make sure you don't share people where you live, especially if you are doing a work from home like I do. So let's say you know I want to I want to say um, what are we doing? Select the location on the map where we're going to start the location. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to grab this little push pin and I'm going to say I'm going to start right here uh, on the corner of uh, Stadium Road between the basketball arena and the football stadium. So I'll say I'll share my location, that's the origin, and where am I gonna go? So I can then choose the the origin, and the way this is set up is I can either choose a destination on a map, which you just kind of saw that, so we don't wanna see that again, um, or I can choose a known location. So in this case here, we're just gonna go up the road to the hub. Really, the person should be walking because it's like a five minute walk, but regardless, people are lazy, they wanna use their cars. I'll choose uh, set a de destination, and then I'll say that um, where where we're going is I'm going to be en route to the pickup for this person um, because I'm not currently where the passenger I'm picking up. I'm not currently at that location between the basketball and the football stadium. Um, and I said football, and I mean football. I don't mean so I, I don't mean soccer. So I'll say save trip, close successfully, and you can now see that this is now listed as this person is now currently booked and they're en route to a pickup. So let's go through and let's just change this really quick here and make sure that we're in large mode so we can just see it a little bit better. And go back to preview mode. A couple of things you'll notice, I can either view the pickup location or I can update the trip. And if I go over to my list, it's uh, where my data is being stored. I can see that I, I have Megan. So my name is Megan and I've got Megan. This is the, the geolocation of where the pickup is. Um, where they're going. So this is the hub and I have these, I have preset def destinations. So I've got a location name and then I've got the geolocation as well as the status of where they're going. Come back over here. Let's say, um, let's update the trip or let's, I can view the location. This is gonna use the show geolocation option. 
waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're still waiting, we're still waiting. Come on, you're supposed to work now. Preview mode, view the pickup location, there we go. So we can see the pickup location here is, is being, is I, I can't select anything. This is the second of the two geolocation options we have with Viva Connections, where it's showing me where I'm supposed to be going. And then I can also update the trip. So I can either cancel the trip or I can pick up the passenger. Let's just go ahead and pick up the person. We've now gotten to that location. We've picked up John Doe, throw him in the back of the car, or we put him in the trunk if they were obnoxious. I'll click, 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 uh, pick up the passenger. And now you can see I'm listed as I've, I'm hired and I'm driving a passenger to the hub. I can see where am I actually dropping them off, or I can just say I've completed the trip. Are you sure you want to complete the trip? I'll say complete trip. Now keep that in mind, that little quick view you see popping up there, because if I click uh, complete the trip and then I come back over here and let's say if I do another one of these trips, so let's just choose a location. We'll start right where we are right now. The destination we will again, just choose another location, set the destination and we'll start the trip right now. All right, um, no, let's not do that. Let's go and route to a pickup again and I hit save the trip. If I come over here and say update the trip and I say cancel, notice I'm gonna get, uh, it's not working. Browser screwing up here because this thing was working right before the demo, of course, right? Uh, I would get a different confirmation that's going to ask me, "Do you, are you sure you want to cancel the trip? That cancel and that confirmation of like that I've completed the trip or I'm canceling it, that's kind of important because I'm going to show you how we're using the same quick view to do two different things. So let's get out of this. Let's go back to the code and let's actually see what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and stop this. So what do we have here that's interesting? So. I'm going to open up the main class, uh, the main file that we have here for my quick view and or for my um, my ace. And in this case here, this guy has got not a whole lot of stuff associated with him. Um, I've got on the on the properties. I really only care about the list ID and uh, my SharePoint list where I'm storing all of those trips. Um, or I'm going to and then the other thing I'm also going to have is an object for the actual list item. And in my case, that's where I'm storing that in the state. And what that's going to do is that now whenever I make a change to the current trip that we're on, so I've either changed the location in either one of the two locations or I've changed the status from it being I'm en route to I've actually got a passenger or I've completed it or I've canceled the trip. I'm going to update this current trip property here on line 26, and that's what's going to trigger the entire ACE to re-render. And I can do that from anywhere in the adaptive card. I can do that from the card view, which is that thing that you see, which is this guy right here, or I can do that from in any one of these quick views as well. Oh, jump too quick. Um, I've got a whole lot of quick views that are created with this, and I'm using the stack idea of the quick view navigator, of, well, of the navigators, but of specifically the quick view navigator to push things onto the stack and kind of pop them off. And so you can kind of see where right now I've got the card view. If I click update a trip, that's gonna put one thing on the quick, that's gonna launch the quick view with this campus shuttle. But if I click on pick up passenger or I go to complete a trip uh, and I mark complete a trip, where's my cancel one? Oh, I didn't did it too fast. I wanna be able to put things, other things up on the, the stack. And if I put a new, a new quick view on the stack, if I push it onto the stack, so the main one is at the bottom and the, the next one is like the next level up. It's going to always re re it's always going to render the ACE rendering engine. It's always going to render the top one on the stack. So if I put another one on the stack, it's going to render that one. Another one on the stack is going to render that one. Hopefully you can see my camera. If not, then I'm doing um, hand motions for just uh, my myself here in my room, in my office. <laughs> Nobody else has seen it. But if I pop something off the stack, so pop that top guy off the stack, like the confirmation one, then it'll drop back to the next quick view uh, that is on the stack and render that one, or I can just close the entire um, the entire quick view stack. So let's see how some of this stuff is working. Specifically, let's see. I want to show you how the the stuff works for the show location, the geolocation stuff, um, because that's what's kind of unique about this sample. So let's choose the um, setting of the origin. So the set origin quick view. What I'm doing with this is if I scroll down a little bit. To, there's my quick view right there. It's called the set origin. And here I'm going to, I have a method here where I'm uh, returning the data that's out of the box method that if you override um, that uh, accessor method, it'll return back the data that I wanna send to the adaptive card engine that's gonna get bound using the adaptive templating engine with the actual JSON for the card to like mesh the data together. And in my case, I've just got three properties here. I've got the trip, the title, and the description. 
Now, the on action piece here is that what happens when someone you know clicks it? Well, before we do that, let's go back to our the actual JSON. Let's take a look at the JSON for this and see how this looks. So what I've done here is here's my location. And where I want to set the location here, I'm using an action. And my action is called the Viva action uh, get location. You see the squiggly line here that's popping up that it doesn't like it because it's not part of the adaptive card schema. This is, and neither is this parameters piece right here. These are unique to Viva connections. So don't be, don't flip out when you see these squiggly lines like, oh, something's not working. It's like, well, first of all, they're yellow and they're warnings and we're developers and we don't care about those. We only care about red stuff. But even if it was red, we still wouldn't care about it. So in this case here, when someone clicks the, um, the my button called set location or select a location on the map, I'm setting the parameter on this specific action to choosing the location on the map to true. And I'm saying the type equal to Viva Viva action dot get location. Well, if I go back to the set origin, you can see here I'm checking to see is the action type equal to Viva action dot get location. And if it is, I'm going to go get a reference to the current trip in the state of my entire ACE. And I'm going to go set the origin location to it equal to the latitude and the longitude of the location property on that specific action that was passed in as a parameter to this. I'm going to take that and I'm going to push it. I'm going to, I'm going to set the state of that value. So I've now updated the location. And then I'm going to pop the current card that I have, quick, long, quick view card. I'm going to pop that off the stack. So I no longer, am, if, I, if I had multiple cards on the stack, it would go back to the next one down in the stack. In my case, I know there's nothing else there, but by just popping it off is, the, is a better way of doing it, I think, in this case. The other one that I'd want to do is I want to be able to um, maybe set a destination. Or actually, let's do a, a setting the origin. Let's do, what was it, the view location? Where's my view location? There's one. Where was I doing that? Hold on. Let me see. Where, where was I doing that? So I had book a trip. I could uh, be in route, start the trip, set location on the map. That looks good. Set destination on the map. We are now going to the to the right union. I'll set that one. Uh, we're going to be in route to the pickup, save trip. Uh, where was that in UI? View pickup. Oh, that's on my card view. So let's go back over to the card view and let's see how I'm actually triggering this because this is not really a quick view. So I have that view pickup location. If I come back over to my card view, what you'll see here in the list of buttons that are returned in my card view, I have one called, uh, not book, here we go, view pickup location. And one of those cards, because I'm currently in route, I'm returning back two cards. You saw I had update trip and I also had view pickup location, right? Remember that right there? And here, what I'm doing on the, when I click view pickup location, what's happening here is that's going to launch the action called Viva action show location, which is what's going to trigger that quick view to pop up, which it doesn't like to do sometimes for some reason. And I'm going to set the location. I'm going to set the location coordinates that I want it to display equal to the current trips destination location. And I'm grabbing it out as a latitude or a longitude. And the reason why I'm having a case uh, to uh, cast, cast it here to this interface is because um, it's actually this is actually a string. This is not an object. Um, so I, because I'm, as you saw on the list item, I'm just storing them as a comma uh, as a CSV for the um, latitude longitude coordinates. So that's that. That's basically how to do use those two things. The other thing I did want to show you too, because I've got what like uh, two about 90 seconds left. Let me show you this last one that I did is that I have this confirmation card and this is like a dual purpose. Remember I had the cancel or the con or confirm uh, what I wanted to do. In this case here, this is my generic card. It's just a, a text, a title block, a description, and then a submit. Well, if I come over here to the confirmation quick view, what's unique about this is that I've set up a constructor for my confirmation quick view that's going to take in a string, either a cancel string or a complete string. And I'm setting that as a private member on my class of confirmation quick view. I'm then when I return back the the object that's going to go back to the templating engine, I'm going to set the title to the uppercase value of the first character in the string. So cancel or complete. Of course, in this case, they're both C, so I could have hard coded that, but it's a demo. We want to do things kind of right, right? And then I'm going to put in the rest of the word here, all in lowercase, and say trip. Now, what that's done then is I've now created, used just one, one um, quick view and one 
JSON adaptive card, one adaptive card defined in JSON, to implement essentially two quick views. And I know that there's a confirmation card, but that's, I'm trying to prove a point here. When I go back to my actual uh, adaptive card extension, when I registered these two guys, so here's my cancel and here's my complete, notice here on these two, they have different IDs. But when I go to register them on the quick view between cancel and complete, notice here that I'm creating, when I create the class, I'm passing in different strings. So now, according to the rest of my adaptive card, my, my, my adaptive, uh, my ace, I can use these two different IDs, but under the covers, I'm using really the same quick view. I'm just kind of toggling between two different modes of that quick view. So that's basically it. That's everything that I wanted to show for this. I hope this was um, at least moderate useful, moderately useful. Um, but I will, I can, I'll take a look at the chat while Vess is doing wrap up and I'll try and answer any questions that popped up. Sounds good. Thank you, Ace, on that one. Really cool. And it's a great scenario. And just to call out uh, something, but I added in the chat as well, that, of course, that, that geolocation-based uh, experiences makes more sense as they are targeted for mobile devices. So as people are driving their cars, they have a mobile device with them, not using the desktop experience. But Ace was demonstrating this using the uh, desktop experience because it's easier to do that in the development time. But for today, thank you, Luca. Thank you, John. Thank you, Alex. And thank you, Ace. Uh, really cool demos. And just to recap, I mentioned this uh, at some point on the chat or maybe discussion. And next week, uh, we'll have Nancy and Ash Human going through end to end the new Microsoft Diva home experience. So what does it mean? What are the configuration? What are the options? And what does it mean for customers? So that's more a feature demo rather than development deep dive demo. But as a developers and architects, we actually need to understand what that is and what how does it actually behave. And we will definitely explain the extensibility model there as well. And then we have Thomas Schaldek, uh, who is a PM uh, on the Azure Communication Services doing a recap on introduction on Azure Communication Services, which will start going a deep dives after that particular session within upcoming weeks. But thank you everybody for joining today. Uh, hopefully the session was useful and interesting topics. Please do give us feedback on what you would like to see in this course as well. The recording of this session will be available in 24 hours in the Microsoft 365 Community YouTube channel. Do subscribe on there. You'll know whenever there's a new video available, new stuff on there every single day, which is cool. Follow us on Twitter and the next Microsoft Trade is my platform community call happens in January 31st, uh, so a week from now. But that's it for now. Thanks, everybody. Really, really cool stuff. And thank you for the, uh, for the presenters. And we'll be back within a week. Cheers, everybody. Bye-bye.